I tell you what, Dibs, what do you, what is, what, you know, we had those conversations for weeks when we were crossing over with Steiny and Goo as well. The Chris Paul thing made sense to some of us. It did not make sense to others. But specific to the idea of the point guard position, when you see Steph Curry and Chris Paul on the court together in your mind's eye, what do you think of? I think about Chris Paul being able to get Steph Curry open and involved like Draymond does. Because the one thing mm. that Draymond does better than anything maybe other than guarding one through five, is knowing what to and how to get Steph Curry the ball. And I think Chris Paul, Guru, you're right about his ability to score. Yeah. It's not like it used to be. He's not a bucket getter. But, Joe, you said it, basketball IQ. He's an absolute basketball savant. So I think about Chris Paul, and we already saw it in the preseason, where Chris Paul penetrated, Steph relocated. He whipped it out, catch and shoot, bang. I see Steph Curry, not that he needs unlocking, but I see Chris Paul being another guy who can unlock Steph Curry. I'll go. Uh, I think tempo <laughs> was a big problem for them last year. As in, yes. too fast at times when they needed to slow down, too slow at times when they needed to speed it up. You're talking about, if you're a coach, you have one of the smartest floor generals who's ever played the game now at your disposal. And I think the hardest thing to defend in the NBA right now, it's movement without the ball. If one guy's dribbling and five guys are looking at him, you can defend that eventually, even if you're an elite bucket getter like a James Harden. When you have that high pick and roll advantage and an ability to set things up and Steph doesn't have to be a primary ball handler and Klay Thompson doesn't have to have the ball in his hands with six, seven seconds left on the shot clock. Hey, go make a play. I think it opens the floor up for everyone. You're allowing now Andrew Wiggins to be a slasher and a catch and shoot guy. I think this is going to be high, high level half court basketball unlike anything we've seen from the Warriors. This is the side and Steiny, I wonder what you think, but this is the side of it that does immediately makes sense to me which is just talk about the offensive side of the ball with the Warriors the running that Clay and Steph need to do in order to get open and create shots and obviously neither one of them are guys who are that traditional NBA player who can create their own shot the idea of what Chris Paul can do looking for them and creating space for them that's the part of all of this that makes the most sense to me. But what, what do you see when you're in your mind's eye, you think of those two point guards playing together? Well, I think, I think if they play Chris Paul along with Steph Curry, with Draymond Green, Wiggins, and let's just assume Clay, I mean, those, first of all, you got, you got three really good passers on the floor. And if you want to play with Looney, then you have four. So they're going to be really hard to guard if, if they're healthy and they're spry. Because I think there's a fine line between them being able to run an offense that looks like, oh my God, they can get an open shot anytime they want, to, you know what, they're just, they're just, a, just a step slow and, and the shots are a little more contested. And that's the fine line. But I think at their best, they're going to be really hard to guard. If, if they play at least three passers at a time. And then what about when that all flows, you know, though, over to the other side yeah, of, of, of the court? That's, you know, Joe, that, you asked me right from the jump, what's the hesitation? For me, it's age. Nothing you could do about that. But the defensive side of the ball, I am curious to see what that's going to look like. Yeah, that's super small. I mean, there's this myth that the Hamptons Five was a small ball lineup. Kevin Durant, his wingspan Leg. was what? Yeah. Seven, two, seven, three. I don't know. Iguodala, seven, two, seven, whatever. They were actually long and athletic with that lineup. This is going super, super small. Chris yeah. Paul, Steph Curry, two, I'll say average at best defenders, especially at the stage of their careers. Klay Thompson, not the defender he used to be. So I don't think it looks good. You may be trading buckets. And I don't think you could do that at the end of the game. So one of these guys are going to have to be out. Now, the original question, how does Paul look with Steph Curry? That's going to be, they're going to be fine. Hall of Fame players forgot how to play Hall of Fame. So they're, they're, they're the greats they're the greats. They're going to figure it out. How does Paul adjust to Draymond Green, a non-shooter? How does Paul adjust to Kevon Looney running the pick and roll? Kevon Looney finish. Paul used to have a lot of finishers, whether it's Phoenix, New Orleans, OKC. No matter where he went, he had a finisher. Can Looney be that finisher for him? So Steph and CP3, they're going to make beautiful music together. I'm not worried about them two. It's how CP3 adjusts in place well, with everybody else. B, don't you think that the Miami Heat, with having two elite defensive players, yep. Bam Adebayo, Jimmy Butler, and a bunch of shooters mm -hmm. and non-defensive players, they went pretty far running a lot of zones. 
alone in that zone. Eastern Conference. I feel like that's a template. I, I believe 60, 70 percent of the time but, they went zone in the playoffs. Would you see? I don't would know. you say though, Bam Adebayo's more of a threat to block a shot and be a paint presence? But where I, you look at Draymond Green at the stage of his career, guys are going in. The Lakers series is bad. That's a bad matchup for the Warriors. That's that's one bad matchup. He does defend Jokic better than anyone though. Bam could not defend Jokic. Draymond in the past, before Jamal Murray was fully healthy, he defended him as well as you can. Guys, we watch it. He Even then, it. he had a triple double. Jokic said it. Yeah. Jokic said that's that's the hardest guy as far as a matchup for me yeah. in, in the league. So, and then, Goo, what about this? I feel like this is up your alley. When you when, when we're talking about the acceptance of Chris Paul, and this audience in front of us already gave us what felt like a about a 75% approval rating, but let's be honest, that's in the end not really good enough. You want the support of all of the Warrior fans. These two playing together, I think that Steph Curry, he's one of these guys that the positivity emanates off of him on the court at such a level. I think the acceptance of Chris Paul rests on how the fans see him and Steph interact, both on the court and off. Yeah, no doubt. Great point. And I'll say this because I hope I'm not coming across this way. I put major respect, Rodney Dangerfield, on Chris Paul's name. And the reason I have so much energy about Chris Paul is I've rooted for him in the past, and his injuries happen at the most inopportune times. They, they had the KD Warriors up 3-2, his hammy blew. Last year, it, <laughs> before Denver, they needed him in the Phoenix series. He got hurt, didn't come back. So it's going to be good early. What I'm worried about, guys, is can he last when it comes comes April but about what I expect with him and Curry it's gonna be art and it always is with Chris Paul but I've watched Steph Curry make art with Draymond Green uh, with uh, any point guard he's played with like I could give Steph the ball and it's going to work but what about the defensive end that's what concerns me when Paul's out there and if Bonte and Shaskier Wright and Steiny talking about they're gonna finish small I mean, they couldn't protect the rim last year. That is nightmare on Warrior Street for me until we see otherwise. Was Jordan Poole a better defender than Chris Paul? Because I would say no. no. But sometimes, Butch, your best defense is offense, and he could get you on the other end. Jordan Chris Poole Paul ain't getting you on the other end. So if he's what, what bad, if he ain't he scoring like offensively, who's he guarding? What do you mean, but, what am but, I but talking about? I, I, I hear what you're you saying. Up, Chris Paul's points and assists, he's yes. probably more productive he generates than Jordan more Poole. So you two are going to Tell basketball. me that Chris Paul at this point can get you major offense. Phoenix said bye bye for Ask a reason. The number two or three. Speak on that. He's like the four, five. Speak here. on that. Well, Why did Phoenix say bye and we're trying to win a chip? Bradley Bill. Do you That's believe? Exactly. Do you believe if? Do you believe it's possible to trade <laughs> a a uh, a passer for a scorer and you get better? Yes. Is that within the realm of possibility? Yes. I think so. Okay, that's what I think is going to happen. Someone else does have to score those points, though. Chris which Paul, actually, and which, we're not even talking yeah, about it. And, but Chris and, Paul averaged 14 a game last year, yeah. shooting 38% from three, over 40 from the field. He's a very good shooter, especially when he's wide open. He embraces a mid-range where Jordan Poole got erratic last year. Oh yes, he could blow by people, bad. and he could probably blow by defenders better than Chris Paul at the stage of his career. And but fall down. you save possessions with Chris Paul. You don't turn the ball over. Yes, and they were one of the worst teams in the league when it came to that. You have to value possessions. How many one possession games did they lose oh last my year? God. The first well, five game road trip. How many games came down to possessions where they turned it over or smoked layups? So Chris Paul will get you in the right set. Defensively, different conversation. But offensively, I think he's a better fit right now than JP. Uh, well, I, I also I, think that defensively they're going to be better just based on what Joe was saying about tempo because when Jordan was out there, it was so much more breakneck oh back and forth. Yep. And that led to easy buckets on the other end, which hurt your defensive measure. Metrics because they were first were, in pace and last in first in turnovers and he was and that was a bad and, and because of that, not only because of that, but that was a big part of why your defense was so bad. You couldn't set up exactly. your half court defense. No, Dips, how many times did he get blocked at the rim, fall down, and there goes a fast break the other way? Totally. How many times? He was unplayable. A lot. In the he was unplayable. And, I and, and I know we went through a lot last year. It wasn't all his fault.
talk. Right. But he was basically unplayable, and it was, mm. yeah, it was bad. Wow. Chris Paul will never be that unplayable right. in a crucial situation. That is the part of this whole thing that, that makes the most sense to me when you hear that the Warriors were first in pace but also first in turnovers ah. people want to know well how's chris paul going to meet the pace well maybe the warriors need to slow down a little bit and and chris does need to speed up but meet in the middle that does feel like a doable oh. situation isn't for that me. placating no we can't placate <laughs> no. no that's playing basketball that's, that's not adjusting worried. i'm not worried about chris paul's ego not even a little bit